Hi guys, today I will start building probably one of the most versatile scapes ever designed. This thing is fast, super stable, it's light, can take 3 to 4 people and it's car toppable. Very simple design, very easy to build, but it smoked the competition in my skiff design shootout a few weeks back. If you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest you follow the link at the end of this video. And what skiff am I talking about? It's the Aussie Goose, designed by Michael Storer. You can get the plans for the Aussie Goose at storeboatplans.com. I have no affiliation with the site or Michael whatsoever. It's just, well, it builds simple boats that work, so... <laughs> the manual has over 100 pages of well-organized content, starting with the history of how the design evolved, going through the materials list, panel layouts, drawings and assembly instructions, ending with good general boat building tips and advice. The drawings are very simple and easy to read and the manual also shows how to make the sail yourself if you wish to do so. There is a very active community online and if you have any doubts, Michael and the guys are always ready to help. So, let's have a look at what materials I've bought so far to start the build. It's not all that I need, of course, but it allows me to start building the skiff. I bought two sheets of 5mm plywood and four sheets of 4mm plywood. I also bought some bologna wood, as you can see here, and let's go back to that side. I got epoxy resin, 7 kilos, I got some squeegees to spread epoxy, some small brushes for the epoxy as well, I've got some microfibers, sanding discs, and some foam rollers for epoxy as well. I will list the materials on the videos as I use them. Uh, as well as the cost, so maybe if you can't buy everything in one go, at least you will know what you need week by week to start building this boat. It is possible to build this boat in under a month if you want to do so, but I will approach this build in a very relaxed manner. Uh, you, I know people have done this in three to four days, uh, you can ask your friends and relatives to help you and maybe you can achieve that if you're in a hurry. Me, not really, I'm gonna do this at a nice steady pace. Now there are two methods that you can use to build these boats timber frame method or the filleting method. I will use the filleting method but as I go along I'll try to explain the differences between one method and the other. So let's start lofting the side panels and for that I need two sheets of 4mm plywood. If weight is not a priority for you you can build this boat all out of 6mm uh, five ply plywood which will make for a very strong boat me since i'm trying to build a car toppable boat i'm going to use four millimeters for everything other than the bottom which will be a five millimeter my workshop is not long enough for these uh, sheets of plywood because they're two and a half meters each so i need to open that gate a bit and extend the table this is the panel layout by the way make sure the sheets don't move. If you guys can do this on the floor, it's a lot easier, but I can't. Outside everything's wet because it's been raining and here it, my workshop is not long enough and the floor is also wet. So I'm doing it on this table, but it's a lot easier on the floor. Okay, first thing I need to draw vertical or perpendicular lines to this edge of the plywood, 457 millimeters apart because I don't like to compound errors in measurements or dimensions. I'll do the 457 plus 457, it's 914. Plus 457 is 1,371 and so on. If you're doing it like me, just make sure you added the numbers correctly. <laughs> Double check, triple check them. Okay, now you see the inconvenience of doing this 
on a table, especially on a small workshop. Right, we don't need to go all the way to the other side because all four panels are the same. So we're going to draw one panel and then we cut that and we put on top of the other sheets to make the copies of it. So if you do it just halfway, will be enough. Okay, now I need to mark two points. One for the shear line and another one for the shine line. It starts on this edge of the plywood and again two points on the next perpendicular line and the next one and so on. Uh, all the measurements are taken from the long edge of the plywood upwards. First one for the shine and the one for the shear line. Okay, from here to the bow of the boat the shine line and the shear line will not have the same curvature as the as it has half. So you will have to mark another perpendicular line here and another one here, according to the plans, of course, um, so that you can have the correct shear line and shear line and shine line. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Right. Next thing we need to do, we need to drive some small pins on every dot that we've marked on these lines and then we will put a thin button so we can draw a nice smooth curve. Okay, this is still the same button as I used for my Goat Island skiff build. It's been there for four years now. Still pretty even so. Bring the button to the pin and clamp it. Here there's no pin, so all you need to do is force it there and clamp it on the mark. There you go. Our, sh our shine line is ready to be marked. And remember, this button doesn't have to go all the way to the bow because from here forward, it's a different curve. It's not the same curvature as haft. So don't worry about this bit. And here we go. We have the basic shape of our hull already on the plywood. If we take a peek along this line, you shouldn't see any lumps or bumps or anything. It should be a smooth curve all the way to the stern. But before I start cutting these panels, I'm going to mark the bulkhead positions. Okay, this here is the center case bulkhead position and I'm marking it as a dashed line. The other bulkhead is on this extra line we marked earlier on. So now, now before I take the panels apart, I want to put a line across both sheets so I can line them up when I'm putting them together again. Across the two panels. This way, when I'm joining these panels again, I know they are in the exact position they should be. I have also marked this as panel 1 front and panel 1 rear. And we are ready to start cutting the first panel. Okay, you can see that I've cut a couple of millimeters away from the line. This now needs to be sanded or planed down, depending on your preferred method. Just make sure you don't go over the line. That line should be there always. And now the shear line. Okay guys, I'm going to show you here with two brand new sheets how you're supposed to mark the copy panels. Okay. 
That's the first panels that we cut. I'll drive a few pins there. Okay, now all you have to do is draw your lines. We can now remove this panel to these lines. That will help you line them up after you cut them. And if you're wondering why you're seeing two brand new sheets here, that's because my GoPro overheated while I was cutting the other panel. So this is the only way I have to show you how it's, it's supposed to be done. But in reality, you should already have a sheet here with a cutout this which would be the original ones and now you would be doing this here okay now that i've got all the panels cut i'm joining them so i can put panel one on top of all of them put some pins and then sand to the line okay that looks good Don't hammer them all the way in or you won't be able to remove them without damaging the plywood. Right, now I can move this as one piece and I can put the planer here or I can put the, the sander, whatever. I've got the four panels. It took me roughly four hours. It's a lot of time, but I have to put two sheets on, then remove one so I can cut the other one, then put the second sheet back on and so on. So if you have a bigger garage or bigger workshop, you should be able to do this a bit quicker. Also, you can add some time for camera work, like replacing the batteries, choosing the angle, uh, working the tripod, etc., etc. But four hours is what it took me. So four hours goes on the spreadsheet. Okay, and we're back on, in the workshop. And now I'm going to trim this down to the line. As you can see here, I did not trim the first panel to the line. I opted for leaving it as is and cutting the other ones a slightly bigger as well. This allows me for some screw up on the panel alignment, uh, but also creates a lot more work. But I opted for this one. You can obviously trim the first panel to the line and cut the other ones closer. And here we've got four tools you can use for the job. If you've trimmed that very close to the line already, you can just do the final touches with the hand one. Or if you have a lot to trim like me, you can use bell sander or the electric one. Be careful with this though. Let's try this one first. I think this is the most dangerous of all of them. Whatever tool you choose, make sure that you keep it perpendicular to this. Make sure when you're trimming it, you do not erase this line. This has to be visible at all times. Be careful with the pins as well.
and I believe that's our four side panels done. Okay, there's only one thing left to do, that's to transfer this to the top of every panel. That's the bulkhead line. Okay, now I'm gonna take this all apart and put them to the side while I cut the rest of the pieces. I guess if you have a big workshop, uh, you could glue them already, but I don't, so these are gonna be done later. Right, now I have the last of the thin sheets here. If you remember, I'm using four four millimeter sheets and two five millimeter sheets. If you're using all the same, pick any sheet, otherwise you have to make sure that you cut the foredeck, the bow and stern transoms from the last of the thin sheets. Hey guys, look how off this sheet is. Look at that. The same on the other side. This must have gone in the cutting machine slightly skewed like that. For these cross cuts, because it's across the grain, I'm using a finer tooth uh, saw blade. Uh, I believe that's actually for metal, but uh, otherwise this will just damage the sheet. And that's the bow. Okay, that's another sheet done. I've cut all the bits from the fourth thin sheet. Um, and now I need to trim this all to the lines. Okay, if I need to finish, to trim a piece like this with the grain across to the edge I need to trim, I like to use the belt sander. It gives you a much better finish, but you have to be careful, otherwise this thing's gonna be all wonky. For this one, which is the grain is running on the same direction as I want to trim, I'd rather use this, much better. Okay, now I need to cut one of these 5mm sheets, which are the thicker ones, so I can um, cut the bulkheads. And it's a shame I'm not varnishing the boat, because these bottom sheets are absolutely gorgeous. Here we go. Okay, I guess that's it. I don't need anything else from this sheet for now. Uh, all I needed was the, the bulkheads. Nice one. There you go. I've got all the pieces cut now, apart from a couple of butt straps. I've gone through the five sheets in, well, four hours yesterday, four hours today, that's eight hours. So basically a day's work to cut all the pieces. I still need to cut out on the bulkheads, but apart from that, everything else is cut. That's all I'm going to do for today. Uh, by the time you watch this video, I'll probably have my Patreon page up already, and you can check small midweek updates uh, in there. So guys, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.